Welcome everyone. It is 12 o'clock and it is time for our latest Cook Expert cooking demo. Um, hello everyone. As you all are coming on, I will just introduce myself. I'm Christine Bailey. I'm a nutritionist and a chef. And of course, I love my Cook Expert. And I will be today showing you one of my family's favorite sort of comfort recipes. Um, I am actually celiac, so a lot of my recipes that you see me make are always gluten-free. And so if you are someone that also needs recipes that are allergy-free, uh, this is the demo for you, because this is a gluten-free and dairy-free sticky toffee pudding. And while I appreciate that traditionally a sticky toffee pudding is probably not the healthiest of recipes. As a nutritionist, I have tweaked this recipe just to make it a little bit more guilt-free. Um, so welcome everyone, if you're just coming on, uh, we're gonna get started in a minute and I'm gonna show you a really, really simple recipe using the Cook Expert today. Um, and I will show you how to make a sticky toffee pudding. You will find all the ingredients on the Facebook page and I will talk you through all the weights and measurements as well and any instructions using the Cook Expert as well. So if you're not used to a Cook Expert, let me just explain what it is. So the Cook Expert by Magi Mix, when you order it, you get the metal bowl uh, which is an induction. So we're actually going to be um, simmering away uh, using this. But you also do get, which I won't be using today, a food processor as well. So the food processor actually goes on the base as well. Um, so if you love the food processor, you're going to love this because this just takes it up a notch. So we can cook in here. So whether it's things like warming soups, stir fries, um, sweet pudding sauces, risottos, smoothies, ice cream, you can make it in this. And then of course you've also got the food processor. So the weather is getting cooler. Um, this is really the time for lovely comfort food, but I just wanna make it slightly healthier. So welcome everyone if you're just coming online. Uh, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, what, if you've got a cook expert, just let us know what sort of recipes you are using and cooking at the moment, because this is the time for slightly warmer, healthier, perhaps food as well. We're coming up to Christmas. Um, so let me get you started. So what we're going to do first of all, sticky toffee puddings, traditionally, um, you might actually bake them in the oven. Today, I'm going to make this a little bit lighter by steaming it. So again, when you get the Cook Expert, you do get a few accessories as well, as well as the food processor, and you get a steamer, uh, which is great for sweet and savoury things. But obviously today, I'm going to show you how to use it to make a steamed pudding effectively, our sticky toffee pudding. Um, and one of the nice things about this is because you can preset everything, um, you know, if you want to get on with something, so if you want to just steam something, get on with something else, you can. It will just do its thing. And I actually used this last year for my Christmas pudding because I just wanted to, you know, set it on its program, get it um, steaming away for an hour or so, and then I could just get on with everything else. So again, really handy because you get set programs um, which you can just set. It will do its own thing and it just helps you when it's very busy, particularly around Christmas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just simmer away some pitted dates. Now, what I've got in here is 130 grams of soft pitted dates. Doesn't really need to be that soft, but pitted, definitely. And I've been soaking them in the same amount of warm water and flavouring it with a little bit of tea. So generally what I do is just stick a tea bag in, take it out at the end, obviously, um, and that just flavours uh, the dates as well. Um, and sometimes what I like to do is actually use like a chai um, tea bag, vanilla one, um, which just gives it a little bit more flavour. So that's all going into the Cook Expert. 
Um, and you only really need to just, you know, soak it for five or ten minutes just to really infuse that tea. Um, and then what we're going to do is this is where the sort of cooking bit comes in. So normally you might be simmering this away in a saucepan. What I'm going to do is you're going to select the expert mode. Um, and I do want it to um, sort of break it off as it cooks. So I'm going to do it for around about five minutes. Probably won't actually need that long. We're going to do it at the speed three. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the temperature up to 110. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to um, stir it. So you can see it's stirring away, but it's going to heat it. And it heats it very quickly because it's induction. Um, so it really won't take long for this actually to get really quite hot. But because it's stirring, it's not going to stick to the base. It's just going to break it up very gradually. And this is really handy. So, you know, at the moment, it's that sort of season where you might have a lot of windfall apples, for example. What I tend to do is chop them all up or, or just into big pieces, really, stick them in here with just a little bit of apple juice. And then again, do the, exactly the same setting, maybe do it for 10 to 15 minutes. And, you know, you're going to get a lovely hot stewed apple. And I tend to then freeze that, put it in the fridge for a while. Um, but what's really nice is things like the stewed apple, and this is a great way of using sort of leftovers, is a really good natural sweetener for cakes and biscuits and muffins. So if you're looking to just try and tweak recipes and just reduce the sugar content, you know, using things like either some of the dried fruit as a puree, or something like stewed apple is a really good option. Now, if you didn't have dates, you could actually use prunes instead. So again, pitted prunes, exactly the same way. You get a really nice, quite rich flavor with those. Um, so again, just tweak this recipe accordingly. Now, this recipe um, will make at least four little puddings um, depending on the size of your ramekins, because I'm going to use it in ramekins, or a um, steamed pudding, so 450 gram, which will be about a pound pudding basin. So if you had a larger family, you could double this recipe. So, you know, just look at the ingredients, double it up. Um, the nice thing about the cook expert is actually, it has a very large capacity, 1.5 litres. So, you know, if you are cooking, I'm just thinking of Christmas now, and you're perhaps thinking, you know what, this would actually be a really nice alternative to a Christmas pudding, you could double this up quite easily. Um, you can also freeze this pudding as well. So once you've made it and you've steamed it, you could actually just put it in the freezer for a month or so and then just re-warm it up either in an oven or just in a steamer just so that it's piping hot. So again, these are really good recipes for sort of getting ahead of time. It's not that long for Christmas. So I can feel already that this is really quite warm. Um, and because it's been spinning around, it's chopped all of my dates up. So I'm going to stop that now because to be honest, that's definitely ready and I'm going to just show you um, how quick and easy it has been just to sort of puree that up so I'm hoping that you can see that can you see the steam coming out um, and that's how hot it will get it gets hot really really quickly now you also get a spatula so if you need to just use the edge of the spatula just to um, you know press down any mixture back into um, the center and then we're going to add some of the rest of the ingredients now I've kept the sugar content reasonably low I've got just a couple of teaspoons of um, it could either be molasses or treacle black treacle the reason for this partly is because this is what really gives it that sort of richness of flavor now the other thing is I mean traditionally you wouldn't do this um, but if you wanted to, you could, at this point, add a teaspoon of 
um, ground ginger or cinnamon to get it sort of more of a warming flavour. I'm not going to do that, but I have done that. So if you like that sort of more warming spice type flavour, add it at this point. Instead of the black treacle, you could use, if you've got, I don't know if you've got these, but you know you can get the jars of stem ginger. That syrup is absolutely delicious and you could use that. So if you wanted more of a ginger type pudding, use the syrup instead. Just a couple of teaspoons would really work. And then I've got 50 grams of soft brown sugar. Again, if you really wanted to take the sugar down, you could use something like a xylitol or erythritol, but this is not a huge amount considering that we're making quite a few puddings here. Um, and then I want to keep this dairy free. So for people that do have allergens, um, this is just a dairy free spread. You could use butter instead if you wanted to. So that's 65 grams going in. And what you'll find as well is that the heat of those dates will actually just melt um, that dairy free spread. Um, now this time I don't actually want um, any of the um, heat at all. So, and it's not really going to need very long because I just want to give it a little bit of a mix. So a couple of minutes, but I'm going to just take the speed up to about five because what that will do is it will just um, speed it up a little bit so that it incorporates that mixture quite quickly. And again, the heat of the dates, I haven't got any temperature on now, but the heat of the dates will just melt and dissolve that sugar as well. So that it mixes in really quite easily. Um, so you just want to give that a little bit of a um, a mix and then what we're going to do is just add the rest of the ingredients and this is what's really nice about this recipe there aren't actually that many ingredients at all um, so it, and it's hopefully it's things that you may well have in your cupboard um, now I wanted to keep this gluten free um, of course if you don't need to be gluten free you could just use ordinary flour so please don't worry um, but I just want to show you that, you know, if you are catering for people that have allergies, it is easy using the Cook Expert just to tweak recipes um, and make them suitable. Um, so in here, I've got 130 grams of self-raising gluten-free flour. Um, that will just give it a little bit more lightness. Now, I didn't want it to be particularly really heavy stodgy pudding i wanted this to to taste comforting but still be a little bit lighter hence the self-raising flour so you could use regular self-raising flour and then just to give it a little bit more lightness i've got here a teaspoon of bicarbonated of soda and then we're going to add a couple of eggs as well um, i sometimes also like to add just a little bit of vanilla extract um, again, if you're adding more ginger and cinnamon, you might just avoid that. So a teaspoon of the vanilla extract uh, will work really well. So again, this has uh, nicely mixed for me. Um, and again, same thing, if you find uh, that the mixture needs a little bit of pressing down, then just use your spatula. Um, this doesn't really need it, but just use your spatula. And this is um, really useful for all sorts of recipes as well. Um, and you can actually take the plastic bit off and you get this little metal blade, which is sometimes quite useful. If you've burnt something, you just want to scrape it off. Uh, you can just do that as well. So the rest of the recipe is literally just putting in your ingredients. So that's a teaspoon of the uh, vanilla, and then 130 grams of your self-raising flour. I'm using the gluten-free one. The bicarbonate is going in at this point as well, and then the eggs. And again, all we're going to do is really a quick mix. Now, the other nice thing, of course, is that this is just one piece of equipment. So if you're someone that really doesn't like washing up, which is me, um, this is perfect because you're not really having to worry about loads of different uh, 
in utensils to um, use up. So I would just give this a minute or so, maybe a couple of minutes, um, and I take the speed up to seven. Again, no heat at all, um, because all we really wanted to do is just a quick mix, and then we're going to be steaming it. Now, I mentioned that it has a very large capacity. So one of the things you could do is double this recipe and say you didn't actually want to steam it, you could put it in a tray bake tin, uh, just grease the tray bake or line it and then pour in your mixture. You're going to want to bake it in the oven at 180 degrees C for about 30 or 40 minutes, depending on the size of your tin. I'm actually going to steam it um, because I like the lightness of the, of the texture when you steam it. And I'm going to steam it in a couple of ramekins, but what I do like to do is instead you can use a standard pudding basin. Um, this is a, a one pound one, so 450 grams. Um, grease it, just use a little bit of dairy-free spread, um, and then when, once it's steamed, and you can steam it in the Cook Expert, and I'll show you that in a minute, you can then, of course, tip this out, and we're going to make a lovely toffee sauce to pour over it. So this is a really good option if you don't want to do individual puddings or you want to have something as an alternative to the Christmas pudding, which not everyone likes. My kids love it, but uh, uh, not everyone likes it. And this would be a really good alternative to that as well. So this is now done. And I'm just going to show you the mixture. Again, what I would tend to do at this point is just use your spatula, scrape everything down, make sure that everything is nicely mixed. And I'm actually going to just pour this into a jug for you, just so I can show you. But also, I wanted to show you one of the other really good features of the Cook Expert, and that is that you can rinse this and give it a bit of a clean because it has a rinse program. So I just want to show that to you as well, because again, it makes your life so much easier. I mean, it is worth mentioning that this will also go in... Uh, a dishwasher if you wanted to as well um, so you know making life easy is definitely something that you want to be thinking about at this time of year for Christmas so let me know everyone what you are using the cook expert for at the moment whether it's the sweet things maybe you've already started getting ready for Christmas do let me know um, it is stir up Sunday this uh, Sunday. I don't know if anyone else uh, uses that as their opportunity, but in my family, stir up Sunday is actually a really big thing. Um, and it's the time traditionally that you would make your Christmas cakes and your Christmas puddings. So this is going to be busy this weekend, I can show you. Right, so rinse function. All you need is water. Now, if you've made something where you think, oh, it's a bit sticky, it looks a little bit, uh, you know, burnt or whatever, you could add a little bit of fairy liquid or washing up liquid or something like that as well. But really, you don't need to. Now, it has a couple of lines in here. So you just pour water into the first line. Um, and this just makes life so much easier. I mean, this is the great thing about a cook expert is that, again... You know, it's one piece of equipment, it will do so many multiple tasks and it will clean, which is really handy. So what you have is a number of um, set programs on here, whether it's baking, whether it's cooking, whether it's smoothies, soups. Um, and at the end, you'll see one that will say um, rinsing. And then all you need to do is press auto and it's just going to blitz it and clean it for you. So what it means is that even if you were going to put it in a dishwasher or give it a quick, quick clean, this will actually just make it much, much easier for you. Now, while that's rinsing, what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to pour, I'm just going to show you two ramekins for now. But this mixture will do at least four ramekins. These are quite wide ones, so they're about 10 centimetres in diameter. And ramekins vary a bit, so you'll get either four or six out of this, um, or one of the one pound puddings. So I'm going to pour this in. Now, if you were thinking about um, tipping these out, I like to actually serve them in the ramekin. But if you were thinking of tipping them out, I would probably just grease the ramekins first before you um, poured the mixture in. And I certainly would do that when I'm using um, the pudding base and I generally just grease it. With this, I wouldn't necessarily put a lid on it um, when you're steaming it. So you've got plenty of opportunity for it to rise. There's no real need to put a lid on it or even foil. So you can just steam it as they are, which makes it again so much easier. Um, and I'll talk you through that in a minute. So that's my um, rinse function done. So I'm just going to tip this out and I just want to show you afterwards the... Um, the basin just to show you that it really cleans quite easily um, and just saves you that bit of hassle as well. So can you see that's you know really quite clean and I didn't use any fairy liquid with that or anything and the reason I just want to do that is because I'm now going to steam. So again if you are someone that likes to you know do a very simple healthy meal you could use this to just put in, you know, a base of some nice veg, green beans, broccoli, whatever it is you like, piece of salmon on there, and you have a set program for steaming. Um, and, and again, the nice thing about Cook Expert is, depending on what you are using it for, sizes, quantities, you can change all the settings as well. So if you think, actually I need a little bit longer steaming, you can change the times. So the speed, the temperature, the times can all be changed, which means that you have control over the food that you are preparing. So when it comes to steaming, you're going to pour in some um, hot or boiling water, again, up to the line, um, and that just makes it very convenient. You get your steamer, now again, if you are someone, and particularly around Christmas, you're going to have a lot of people, then what you can do is rather than um, this steamer, you can actually um, purchase an additional steamer, uh, which is slightly bigger, that goes on top. And I just want to show you that, partly because this is what I was using um, for my Christmas pudding. So this is a actually a very large capacity and it goes on top of your cook expert so you if you want to you can purchase a larger steamer as well now for this recipe you don't need that um, you just need the one that you get when you buy your cook expert um, so I'm going to place in my um, ramekins so again this will fit the one pound uh, pudding basin so if you wanted to you could put the whole mixture in here put that in there and steam it um, then we're going to put the lid on and th again the nice thing with this is that you have a set program um, that will uh, steam for you so when we go back because I've just rinsed it so we're going to just uh, take it back and you'll see that you've got a whole number of different settings here. Um, and the nice thing is about this is that you, when you get your Cook Expert, you also get um, your um, recipe book as well, and you have access to an app. So if you're new to all of this, don't worry, um, because you will get all the additional extra recipes, apps, and instructions to help you, guide you through the different programs that you get and how you can use it for both sweet and savory as well. It has 13 different programs. Um, so if you're someone who really likes to bake, 
You really like to make bread, for example. Maybe you love soups. Maybe you love stir fries, risottos, curries. Whatever it is, you will find recipes to help you, to guide you um, through that. Now, the standard steam recipe, so I've just pressed auto. It automatically will start to heat up and it's going to steam for me. Now, the standard time for that one is 20 minutes. Now, depending on the size of your ramekin, you might only actually need 15 minutes. Um, with mine, because they were actually quite wide, I like to give them 20 minutes. Now, if you were using um, this one pound, I would probably um, increase the time to about 40 minutes. Um, so again, you can just adjust the times and the settings to really match what you are using this for. Um, when you're doing something like a Christmas pudding, you're going to be probably steaming it for an hour and a half or whatever. So, you know, again, you can use this to do your Christmas pudding as well. So while that is steaming away, I want to show you a very, very simple sort of toffee sauce. Now, the lovely thing about this is this is actually really nice poured over baked fruit, for example, pears or, or poached fruit, uh, or even drizzled over ice cream as well. And again, the other thing is, if you don't like those sort of sauces, you could serve this with custard and you can make custard in your cook expert. And you can either do it with egg yolks and dairy free cream or milk, or you could use the custard powder or corn flour. You can change the recipe according to your di dietary needs. Um, so I'm going to use this one just so I can get this going um, for you, but it's a really simple recipe and really doesn't need much effort at all. And again, it's dairy free. So what I've got in here is 200 mils of soya cream. You could use an oat cream as well. That works really well. Um, and these are all readily available as well. Obviously, if you weren't dairy free, just use regular um, cream, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then just to give it a little bit of richness, I've got here um, 30 grams, um, so I'm not using a lot of the light brown sugar. And then again, the same amount, 30 grams of just a bit of dairy free spread. Um, and then if you want to, just to give it a little bit more richness, just a teaspoon of uh, black treacle. And again, if you like that sort of nice vanilla flavor as well, just add a little drizzle of you know, vanilla extract as well. Again, sometimes I do actually like to drizzle in a little bit of that stem ginger syrup. My family are really obsessed with ginger. Anyway, so now this time, um, and this is one thing that I haven't mentioned, is that you can take the lid on and off as well, which is fantastic, because what it means is, say you want to make a sauce and you actually want to reduce it slightly, um, this is a really good way of you know, intensifying flavour. So for this one, I'm taking the lid off. Um, and so again, say you're making a savoury sauce, like a tomato sauce, and you just want to simmer it down, uh, just take the lid off and that will do it for you. So with this again, I'm going to keep it on the expert mode, probably only needs about three minutes um, or so. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm still going to have it at a three because I want it to actually mix as I go through but I want the temperature up. So I'm going to take it up to about 95. Um, and what you'll find is that it, because it is induction, it will heat up very quickly. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could prepare this in advance and then just reheat it. Same with things like custard and so on as well. If you wanted something a little bit different, why not make a very instant ice cream? Um, and this is something that I do an awful lot, particularly if you know if you've got leftover bananas. Um, if you peel your bananas, just cut them up and then spread them out on a lined baking tray, freeze them. 
So they're really, really hard. And then you can just bag them up as well. And then put in your frozen slices or chunks of banana in here with just a little bit of either dairy-free yogurt, Greek yogurt, dairy-free um, cream, and then blitz it up on high and what it's and lid on obviously and what it's going to do is it's going to blitz it all up and make an instant ice cream for you but also healthy ice cream and it's just one of those really simple things so if you're someone that regularly has bananas which sort of go a little bit manky chop them freeze them and then you've always got that option to make ice cream and this works really well with ice cream I'll tell you it's really really good so that's going to have 20 minutes and by the way if you love steamed puddings please let me know what are your favorite steamed puddings because you know I my family love those sort of warming steam puddings so if there's any particular steam puddings that are your family favorites just drop me a line let me know type down and so we can all share what you are making and let me know as well are you doing stir up Sunday because I do in my family and I mention this to some people and they just think I'm a little bit mad but I love stir up Sunday so I'll be making probably two gluten-free dairy-free Christmas cakes and Christmas puddings as well already um, and it isn't that long before Christmas. So let me know if you're also someone that's on Sunday going to be making their um, lovely little dishes for Christmas. So while that's heating up, I want to show you the steam puddings. So I have made a couple ahead of time. And I, what I really like to do with my steam puddings actually is if I'm making them in a ramekin, and the reason I like to do them in ramekins is because if you're entertaining, it's just a lovely way of presenting uh, a pudding rather than in a tray bake. And this is just such an easy option if you're thinking about something that you'd like this warming, but you want to serve it for um, you know, a special occasion, for example. So I've got mine in my ramekins. I want to show you this. I've also made, in the Maggi Mix, a really nice thick custard as well. Um, and again, you can easily make custard dairy-free. Just switch to a dairy-free soya milk or cream, corn flour, egg yolks, little bit of sugar if you want it and you can just set it off and it will make uh, custard for you very very easily so I've got here my my custard but I want to show you um, the sauce as well and what I tend to do is just pour it over as well so I think that's pretty much ready so let me just stop that and again remember that this because it is induction if you want to make something just a, a little bit ahead, this will keep warm as well. Um, so again, really nice option if you're trying to get ahead with things. Um, so I'm going to pour this into a jug just to make it slightly easier, just so that you can see it as well. Can you see that gorgeous? And I can see the steam coming off of this. Absolutely gorgeous. Just lovely, rich, creamy delicious toffee type sauce so there we go let me just pour that over so can you see how easy it is when you've got the cook expert you will soon discover how simple it is to make these gorgeous recipes so there you are sticky toffee pudding made gluten-free dairy-free and so great for this time of year. So I really hope that you've enjoyed our cook along today. Let me know what other recipes you want us to make. And um, particularly if you do struggle with any allergens or family members that have dietary requirements, uh, because we want to show you just how easy it is to make these sort of recipes. And again, join the Facebook page, um, introduce yourself to each other, uh, it's a great supportive network for little tips and hints as to how to make life a little bit easier with your cook expert and in the kitchen as well. So thank you everyone. 
I will see you soon for another great cook-along, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you, everyone.